Uh, and I'm back. Um, what to say? Not that I guess. Change that. Engage. Uh, and I'm back, and today, for my first video back in quite some time now, we are making a cocktail in honour of the greatest captain on all of Starfleet, Jean-Luc Picard. Next maybe Benjamin Sisko, but um, we can have this debate in the comments. Oh yes. That's how it starts. But the road from legitimate suspicion to rampant paranoia is very much shorter than we think. So uh, why am I making this video? Why am I making a return to Star Trek? Well, uh, for those of you that know the channel will remember that a few months ago I did Aldebaran Whiskey from Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, which is a recipe that I am still very, very proud of, and you should go back and check that out, that cocktail. It is green. But uh, the video as a whole is very obviously made by someone who knows pretty much next to nothing about uh, The Next Generation. So this video is, uh, you know, this is my, this is me owning up to that mistake and uh, setting the record straight. And since then, I have gone and watched all of Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And uh, I've got to tell you, uh, The Next Generation, probably one of my favorite TV shows of all time now. Uh, you know, something I definitely should have watched quite a bit sooner. But in that case, why am I making a Picard cocktail and not a Kirk cocktail? Well, I mean, I could. I would just need some... Uh, bottled Shatner Foo, around a few decades worth of missed child support payments, and uh, the two pay for a garnish. <laughs> this is probably the best cocktail that I've ever made, and it's something that I'm really truly proud of. I was working on a submission for a cocktail competition, and uh, just as a starting point I decided to look at a bunch of ingredients that would perhaps harmonise and um, relate to the character of Jean-Luc Picard. As we know, there is the ever-iconic tea, Earl Grey, hot. You said this is Earl Grey, I'd swear that it was Darjeeling. Uh, which is a fantastic starting point when looking for flavours and ingredients for the cocktail. Uh, and of course, uh, Picard also owns Chateau Picard, uh, one of the uh, finer vineyards in 24th century France. And of course, we also have the naval influences of Star Trek. Um, many people will know that uh, gin became a very renowned spirit worldwide due to the influence of the Royal Navy. Uh, this is something that I could go into excruciating detail about, uh, but I will spare that, spare you guys from that. Um, all you need to know is that officers uh, on Royal Navy sailing crafts were usually rationed and provisioned with gin, while sailors were provisioned with rum. So Jean-Luc Picard being the captain of his ship, um, using gin as a base spirit in this regards is something that uh, just makes a lot of uh, thematic sense. Uh, although it is a well-known fact among keen Trekkies that Gene Roddenberry really despised the naval and militaristic influences uh, visually upon Star Trek that really started to appear around Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Open the airlock. This is an aesthetic and thematic choice which persisted uh, a lot through the mainline movies and something which really comes to a head in Deep Space Nine when Starfleet really acts as a full-blown military force in its war with the Dominion, although the naval influences at that point are pretty much largely gone. Uh, however, coming back to uh, Jean-Luc Picard, captain of the uh, USS Enterprise D, uh, this is a drink that I've uh, created in honour of him and something that I could really just see uh, Guinan uh, you know, on a slow night in 10 forward, putting something together uh, to honour her friend and his career. So the Picard is going to be a shaken drink, and uh, of course we have the tea Earl Grey hot, which appears in probably just about every single episode of the show. Um, starting from there, I've made an Earl Grey tea syrup. Basically, just brewed some strong Earl Grey tea, mixed that one-to-one -one with uh, sugar, uh, just stirred that until it was dissolved, and uh, Earl Grey tea syrup fantastic foundation for the flavour base of this. Now, because Picard also owns Chateau Picard, I've also opted to use red wine in this drink. Something which was a bit of a challenge, getting the red wine to balance with Earl Grey syrup, because both of them have their own individual strong tannins. And uh, they do work together, but they also want to fight each other a lot, especially in the presence of London Dry Gin, which, of course, mentioning the naval influences of Star Trek, 
uh, has kind of got to be in there as well. So we have a lot of the floral botanical notes from the uh, from the gin, the Earl Grey syrup, uh, matching with the tannins in the red wine. It's um, it's a bit of a wrestling match between uh, all these ingredients, but uh, I've managed to get them balanced, and uh, so this is what we've wound up with. Make it so. Now, uh, just before we get started, uh, this drink will be made in milliliters because there's a bit of a precise balance between some of these, rather than this, just the standard ounces or parts. Um, you can, uh, if you adjust your ratio to be uh, 25 to one part, instead of 30 mils uh, to one part or one ounce, we can follow along, but uh, the best thing to do is just uh, make sure you have some precise measuring tools if you're making this one at home. So to start us off, 25 mils of Earl Grey tea syrup. Now because, oh, fuck me, that's fine. Now because the primary flavoring component in Earl Grey tea is uh, bergamot, a kind of bitter orange, I've also elected to use some Italicus in this, a fantastic liqueur, which looks just beautiful. It looks like a bottle of Romulan Ale, honestly. Um, so if there's ever a Romulan Ale episode, uh, it'll be a bit difficult to maybe not, not put some, uh, some Italicus in there. But uh, we need some Italicus, bergamot liqueur, bergamot being the primary flavoring component of Earl Grey tea. Uh, some of this has to go in there. Uh, so 10 milliliters of our bergamot liqueur. We are also going to need just another 10 milliliters of our red wine. Using something like a Pinot Noir is going to allow the wine to really play quite nicely with all the other ingredients we have in here. So I've gone for a Pinot Noir in this recipe and I would highly recommend using the same or something similar. I'm no wine expert, so that's as good as I can give at the moment. We are going to need 40 milliliters of a London dry gin. We are going to need 15 milliliters of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So as I say, this is going to be a shaken drink, but it's also going to require an egg white, which will just give us a lovely foam and a fantastic texture. Uh, I'm going to give that a dry shake just to emulsify the egg. Okay, mine's just started to come apart. So I'm gonna add ice to this and shake it to cool and dilute it. Now, because uh, I want this drink to foam, foam up as much as possible and I'm passing it through a fine strainer, I'm just going to roll it between these two tins, which is just going to add a little bit more air into the cocktail. I'm going to fine strain this into this lovely sherry glass, wine glass. I'm not really sure. Okay, now uh, because this is obviously a sci-fi themed drink for a fantastic sci-fi character, I'm going to give this a Saturn garnish. Uh, and there we have the Picard cocktail, a suitable salute, I think, to the captain of the USS Enterprise D. Let's see how we did, cheers. Mm. Wow, that was a refreshing drink. A lot going on with the flavors there. You're sort of immediately hit by the um, by that red wine. It just comes in very, very subtly and mixes with sort of the more um, the more uh, botanical notes of the gin definitely come through here. Um, and then it sort of goes to the citrusy side as the bergamot liqueur comes through and the citrus notes of the London dry gin. And then as it's going down and you're getting some more air into your mouth, you're just getting hit with the Earl Grey tea syrup. Not in a very aggressive way, just in a very subtle, bittering kind of way that sort of prepares your mouth uh, for the next sip. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what there is more to say about this drink. You uh, hold on, let's uh, let's go in for another sip because I'm really quite pleased with this one. Immediately getting the red wine, very herbal, 
then it sort of becomes citrusy. Yeah, I'm getting the bergamot, I'm tasting the italicus, I'm tasting the orange and the sort of lemon peels in that gin. And then I'm just getting the faintest bit of Earl Grey as it goes down. That's a fantastically balanced drink. There was a lot of different variables in here that I really had to play with for quite some time in order to get it to the place that it's at uh, right now. But where it is, I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased with this. So uh, yeah, I think this is just a perfect toast to my favorite Starfleet captain. And uh, one that I will almost certainly be making when Picard season two comes out later on this year. Uh, yeah, uh, fantastic drink. Maybe, uh, I'd, maybe anywhere else I could go with this kind of theme. Maybe I could do a Benjamin Sisko. I don't really, uh, what does he drink? Raptagino, that's what he drinks. Isn't that just like Cardassian coffee? Or a coffee based, uh, coffee based cocktail with that one maybe. So yeah, it's always uh, a pleasure when I get to come back and make these videos and upload them to YouTube. This is just, um, this is uh, more than a hobby for me. This is just, I get to talk about all of my favorite things. It's a lifestyle. I love uh, the production of these videos and thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in and leave me comments and any ideas where I could go next uh, with this series. Uh, as always, I've been Joe, live long and prosper. Uh, nothing left to say apart from uh, Joe to Enterprise, beam out.